Mayor. Yes. Yes, ma'am. If you would state for the record um, your name and that you're from Burleson or where you're from, who you're with. Okay. My name is Arthur. And what you're testifying sure. on since we had three charges. Okay. My name is Arthur Mayor and I'm here to speak to you about issues facing veterans. Today I myself, I'm a, myself am a disabled Vietnam veteran. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chairman, for uh, and members of the committee for holding this committee on issues concerning our veterans community, community. There are two issues I would like to bring before the committee that have impacted me as a veteran. And I would like to say I'm representing myself here today. The first is the accessibility to be able to see my representative when I have issues that I need to discuss with them. One of my representatives I have met with every time I have requested a meeting. He was a good listener and he asked many questions. And I walked away with appreciation and respect for that elected official. My other representative I started contacting in July of 2014 and to this day I have not been granted a meeting with that uh, representative. I have met with his staff at least five times but have never received the requested meeting with the representative. I did uh, not walk away with the sense that they cared or had a genuine concern for my issue. In two of the meetings with the staff I took other veterans with me who expressed the same needs and concerns as myself but received no positive feedback. If they forwarded my concerns to my elected official, I've never heard from him. And I have walked away from these meetings thinking all the packets I left probably hit the waste basket as soon as the door closed behind me. In the subsequent meetings, nothing was ever related back to me about what was or what was not discussed with my representative or thoughts on the matter. Now I would like to ask, is there a policy in place for members of the two chambers to make sure that veterans that come to the Capitol to see their representatives are in fact seen in a timely manner, that they are respected and treated like the heroes that they are, that this body appreciates the sacrifices they have made, that they demand the same from the entities in the state that serve them, and by that policy they demonstrate that it starts right here in the offices of elected officials and works its way down to all levels of government. And uh, I've got some more about the other issues, but it looks like my minutes, uh, two minutes is up. And um, I think it's, go ahead. Thank you, first of all, so much for your testimony. I can sense obviously a frustration, which I can appreciate that you would have. There's not a policy that I'm aware of that mandates or dictates a representative or senator must see a veteran if they come to the office. I know I can speak for senators when they most certainly would want to hear the complaint or, or problem, at least most certainly talk with office. And then I can speak for the Veterans Affairs and Military Installation Committee that when you talk with somebody in our office, we too will follow up on what the problem is and give you a follow up where we are on it and try to work with you on something. If it is a federal issue, then we try to connect up with the senator or the U.S. congressman of your area. I mean, I can tell you that's just a, our policy. And um, is, does that help at least answer your question about communication with legislature and you? and our other veterans that you, you're speaking for? Because I'm sure you're not the only one that's got this kind of well, problem. I, I feel like there are the other veterans. Uh, and here's the, here's the thing. Uh, um, I know that I joined the Army when I was 17 years old. And, Thank uh, you. Uh, when people were running away from Vietnam War, uh, I volunteered. When I turned 18 years old, I volunteered to go to Vietnam. When I turned 19 years old, I'd been in Vietnam for six months. Now, I didn't run away from the needs of my country. And when I come up here to see a representative and I say that I have something I need to discuss with them, I feel like I have um, earned the right, not only as a citizen of this country, but as somebody that has laid down possible uh, opportunities to, to lay down his life for his country. And uh, I expect to see them. I don't expect to see all the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, a policy analyst that uh, really is communic communicating no concern to me. I mean, I feel um, 
I feel, I feel disrespected. And if other veterans are having that same issue, I'm sure they're feeling disrespected too. Uh, may I add one more thing that, uh, that uh, irritates me a little bit? And, uh, I may, I may have PTSD for all you know, for anybody who knows, but, uh, <laughs> you know, um, this, is, this veterans, uh, you're supposed to have a veterans committee here today, and you're talking about veterans issues. Why, do, why, why didn't you have a panel of veterans here that spoke about issues that affect them? So the people that uh, uh, serve us could hear what our issues are, yes. and uh, they're all gone now. Well, let, you know? me, let me explain. The, we have many committee meetings through this session, sure. that's every other year. Sure. We have our Veterans Affairs Military Installations available Monday through Friday, most right. certainly. Um, and the purpose of today's meeting, right. this committee today, was to address specific charges right. that our Lieutenant Governor, that he collected from the body of us <clears throat> as Senators, wanted to make sure we addressed, and when I say addressed, that would be concerns that we had, that we felt were a problem in the community, or legislation that we passed, did we make any difference? Did we affect the change that was good right. for our veterans? veterans? And so the people that we called to testify were those that uh, we task with that were state agencies, for instance, our higher education right. um, system. Have you hired more people? Right. Where are you on the numbers? So we were trying to get those answers. And so what our this committee was tasked to do was answer interim charges by our lieutenant governor. And so one was employment. We're looking at veterans treatment court that you just heard and this morning. So that's what we were doing here today. It wasn't just um, it wasn't just let's have a you know a free for all complaint session. So I do hear your frustration. I mean there's frustration on the federal level sure. most certainly, which we're trying to just try to connect or buffer anything we can do from the state where you know federal government's got primacy over us sure but anything we can do to help yes now we're all elected and if you are not pleased with how your elected official is sure there is a, a good way to fix that i'm gonna let you figure that out but important is if you've come to the to our veterans affairs and military installation office or called and if we're not getting back to you, then I do need to know that because we want to try to help where we can. So that was the purpose of today. And I sure hear definitely your frustration. And I, I think you speak for a lot of veterans. And we've also tried to set up, we have got a, a website set up just that we're trying to get out to veterans so that we as a Veterans Affairs Military Installation Committee can hear complaints or problems or issues that we can look at, that we can bring up, that we can foresee legislation next session. So we'll give you that and it is in on yellow cards in the back of the room. The piece of paper, the yellow piece of paper in the back. Ruben, would you get some of those so I can give <coughs> Anyway, I'm just telling you, we are trying to make a concerted effort to make more communication, at least our committee and the Senate. But I do speak for this, the Senate. There's not one senator that through the session, did not truly, uh, and they, they never do. I've only been here two sessions, but they try. They listen, and uh, yes, we each represent 900, almost 900,000, 850 to 900,000 people. So it does make it hard, but their offices are open. But <coughs> feel free to let us know if there is a representative or a senator that you don't feel like you're able to talk to. We, we don't mind making a call for you. They're not mandated, and they can still be too busy, but we're happy to make a call for you. Yes, I know, and I, I, I appreciate that. It's just that, um, you know, you, you uh, brung, brung in a lot of these people that you talked to today, and uh, you asked them pointed questions about how their performance is and what metrics they're using to fulfill the mandates that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm the veteran they're serving. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if I can't come 
to my representative and be seen and uh, over nearly nearly two years. In July it'll be two years. I still ain't seen that particular representative. Um, you know, I, I, I think something's wrong, and uh, I'm bringing it to y'all's attention. Maybe y'all can uh, address it some way, maybe not. But uh, if you don't hear from me or hear from somebody, how do you know the, the issue exists? And I think we can, um, and Senator Birdwell, I'll let you comment, but um, I think you live in Burleson? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I think we can get your representative to give you a call. Okay. Well, I'll be well looking depending forward to upon that. which part of Burleson, I may very well be your state senator. Uh, you are my state senator, sir. Well, um, the uh, have, have you tried to contact our office, or are you using representative generically, or representative specific to the state? Well, I'd like to. House, I'd or? like to leave it at generic. I hate to call somebody out. You know, I mean, I, the, it's right. it's not the representative so much. It's the issue. It's the issue that mm -hmm. veterans should be seen when they come here and they have issues that they mm -hmm. want to discuss with their yeah. representative. May, so. if, if I may, let me uh, let me offer this. One of the things that. Uh, I try to do with my team and my staff, and, and this is an organizational dynamic answer. It's not a, uh, I don't know exa if this is exactly how Senator Campbell arrays uh, her battlefield, but this is how I array mine. In having district representatives, there are times I'll get a veteran's question that the federal government is the primary service provider. There's other times that the state is the primary service provider. In fact, one of the gentleman that was here today, actually, uh, the gentleman that preceded him, um, Mr. Richmond, was very good at helping get veterans, even though if it wasn't a state veteran issue, he would get that veteran to the right dynamic inside the VA uh, to be served. One of the challenges that, uh, that comes in the state senate arena is I've got 810,000 constituents. So one of the things I ask my staff to do is to serve our folks, and if the problem is such that I need to, to, my firepower needs to be used, whereas there's times my chief of staff, maybe it's the legislative director, maybe it's the district director, that the problem is such that it can be handled at that level without having to get to uh, the state senator. Um, that is not a statement of absolving of responsibility. It helps me serve all my constituents well with the right time and the right place on the battlefield with the right firepower. Because um, with that many constituents, uh, I need staff to help me do that. I uh, can't, can't do it on my own uh, without my team. So I'd like I hope my team, if you've contacted them, I hope my team has treated you very graciously. Uh, they have uh, your, uh, I believe, Liz and Megan. Um, they're two of, uh, two of yeah, them, yes, sir. They're, they're always very nice and polite and yeah. cordial. So Good. I do appreciate that. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. And uh, thank you for serving because you're absolutely sorry. right uh, about uh, the time would, frame that you joined service. So. I would like to say one more thing. That, sure. um, when I decided to talk about this and bring this before the y'all's attention, uh, I called that same representative's office uh, Monday, and, and nobody's ever contacted me back since then about seeing my representative. Okay. So, and may I ask you, um, did you, and I, sp I don't know specifically the problem, but I don't, yes. it doesn't need to be here. Did you contact any of the, like the 211, Veterans Crisis, any of the, or the Veterans app? Are you aware of any of those? Did you try any of our state services just to see if you can get your, I mean, I'm curious because we're trying to make sure our programs and services <coughs> that we, we offer and that we try to. Uh, make sure work well are working. Did you try any of those for whatever the problem is? Well, um, are they appropriate? Or are they, we missing something? I don't believe that they were the appropriate. What what um, what the issue I was trying to express to my uh, representative is about uh, uh, is um, PTSD and TBI and uh, and uh, medical cannabis. And um, the issues that evolve around that. Okay. And, um, and we did approve medical. Uh, the uh, Texas Compassionate Use Act. We did. Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't help veterans. It helps uh, irretractable epileptic patients mm -hmm. only. Well, it's not. Okay. Well, so, that is a subject for another day. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, let's move on. Thank you very thank much, you. sir. Again, thank you for your service. Thank you. Uh,